right so another day another video um <laughs> i feel like when day storm says it it's like cool because you know he's gonna do something really awesome and when i say it it's it's still cool but i'm just gonna talk for like seven minutes about shit that's pissing me off or it's on my mind or whatever so first crabs um these like Antarctic king crabs have like started invading the like seabed and killing fucking everything down there because the ocean temperatures are rising and it's allowing them to get further and further into the um you know deeper I mean deeper into the into the sea and they're going down and there's like you know all kinds of life forms and stuff in the ocean because it's like you know really diverse organic ecosystem and they have these like huge pincher things, pincer, pincer things. And like, they're basically it's like an arm that's like a spear. And they use it to like jab into the ground and kill all the stuff that's in the, in the, in the seafloor. And they eat everything. And it's freaking people out because they're doing it so quickly. And scientists are saying that it's going to take like, oh, with current trends, it'll take a hundred years. This is something that really pisses me off. It's like, scientists are like weathermen, only worse. Because like, weathermen are at least right some of the time. And scientists, theoretical scientists are, are like physicists and stuff like that. They're cool because they, you know, make these, they're talking about these big laws and stuff like that. And they, they usually tend to, you know, gravity. Gravity is a great example. You know, Newton was really accurate on that. And even like when he was wrong, he wasn't really that wrong. It was just like you could go further with it. And then, you know, people like, um, Planck and Einstein and all these guys did that and they went further with Newton's theories about motion and gravity and they were able to kind of refine them but it didn't really it wasn't wrong Newton wasn't wrong he just couldn't see the big picture and it took you know and that's how that works but then you get these guys talking about tr trends in, in things that we will see in our lifetime they're always fucking wrong like they'll say like oh well it'll take you know 500 years for temperatures to rise, you know, this many degrees. And then three years later, they're like, yeah, it's going to be like 20 years. We were totally wrong. Or, or even like, you know, people who, who come up with these ideas about like, oh, biofuels, you know, ethanol, it's a great idea. It's a fucking terrible idea. We're so sorry. That was a bad idea. Like, we, they just, they can't figure these things out, and, and, and it's not really their fault, I mean, there's so many factors in place, you know, I mean, who can account for, for each new thing that pops up every year, and, and anyways, so with, back to the king crabs, like, they were saying it's going to take 100 years, and now they're like, oh, it's happening now, <laughs> it's a lot sooner than 100 years, like, oh, shit, and I think people are freaking out, because we know the way the earth has been for the last 100 years, could sustain us. Humans could, can live in the earth as it is right now with, you know, these ecosystems in place, you know, with, with rainforest. We can live with the rainforest, but we don't know if we can live without a rainforest. If the rainforest disappears, which, you know, we're cutting it down pretty quickly, we don't know what the world will be like without the rainforest. Oceans, with the oceans as they are, we can live. Good thing. But we keep dumping shit into the oceans and, and we're creating these dead zones, these huge areas where like certain algae and stuff grow, but there's not there's not much oxygen and not many life forms can live in it. You know, crabs are invading and all kinds of shit's happening. You know, I live in Japan and up in Iwat not Iwat well I guess Iwate and like Fukushima and Miyagi and all that, they're dumping all the all the radiate uh, irradiated water into the ocean and what's that gonna do? We don't know. And it's freaky. It's freaky. We don't know if the Earth is going to be able to, to, if we're going to be able to live in the Earth in another 100 years or even another 20 years um, because we're changing things so quickly. And there's, you know, we could live. We, you know, humans are very adaptable. Life is adaptable. Life evolves, right? And it, it changes. And, and you know, we're, we're terrified because we don't know if we're going to be, we're able to, to consciously look forward into the future and we don't know if we're going to be there um i hope we are because i like i like being alive and i feel like despite all the bad things humans do we do a lot of really good and interesting things um for example music <laughs> i think music is like kind of our one saving grace music and art 
It's funny, the things that I feel that are the only reason to keep us around, music, art, philosophy, um, and that's really kind of it. I guess science, you know, music, art, philosophy, science, those are like the only reasons for humans to be on this planet. And those are the things we care the least about. <laughs> you know, they cut science funding in, in schools all the time. They cut arts programs all the time. But we spend so much money on the things that, that, that are pointless. Killing people isn't... There's nothing productive about that. Spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to, for lethal injection programs or spending trillions of dollars on wars... We get nothing from that. A hundred years later, you don't look back and you're like, oh, gosh, I'm really glad we spent all that money on that war. Look at what we have now. Look at the things that we have today that we wouldn't have had if we hadn't killed all those people. And you never think that way. But you look at art, you look, you can always look back and be like, look at what we have. You know, when you go to a museum, it's like you feel an effect, like it's a good thing. But when you go to a place that was devastated because your country went and dropped bombs on it, that's not a good feeling. You don't sit there and think, oh, I'm so happy we dropped two atomic bombs on this country. Yes! It's not a good feeling. It's it's never a good thing. But when you go to a museum and you say, oh, look at look at these look at what Picasso did. Like in Japan, in um, Hakone, there's this really big outdoor museum and there's a big exhibit for Picasso. And I love going there. I, I was never really a fan of Picasso, but when I go to this thing and I see all of his work and stuff, I'm mean, like, I was a genius. And, and even if you don't like abstract or cubism or anything like that, like, there's something there, you know? There's really something, something to be seen. Anyways, this is not the rant that I had intended, but I'm at seven minutes, so I figure maybe I should cut it short. But basically, to kind of bring this all together is that the future is unknown and we don't know how long we're going to be here as a species. We could evolve into something else or, or we could all just die off. Um, but really, I feel like we do have something to contribute. I feel like if, if a, a hundred thousand years from now, humans are gone and aliens find this planet if all they see are a bunch of ruins from all the wars that we had and stuff like that, that will tell them nothing about the kind of people that we were, or the kind of hearts that we had, or, or our hopes and dreams. But if somehow they're able to see the art that we made, and, and if they could hear the songs, I feel like even if they didn't understand it directly, it would give them an impression of what we really valued. And they would see that we're a creative people who, who were able to think beyond ourselves. I feel like war is one of the most selfish things you can do. When you go forth and you, and you feel like you have the justification to kill another person, it is the greatest act of egoism and selfishness that you can take. Because you're saying in that moment that my idea is more important than your life. But art and science are the greatest acts of, of like giving and compassion that you can ever you can ever ever make because when you create a piece of art I'm asking you to join me in my worldview I'm not saying that my worldview is better than yours I'm not saying that my my thought is more important than your life but what I'm saying is for a moment come and join me and see the world as I see it you know share my pain share my love and and maybe you'll reject it maybe you don't want it but will have had that moment of sharing. And when we're kids, that's what we're taught, right? Sharing is caring. You should share. Give to your neighbor. You know, make sure they have something too. But as adults, somehow we forget that, and, and suddenly we don't share anymore. We just take, you know? And I guess it just, I hope someday we can move past that. I hope that can be our evolution, to where we stop, taking and killing and we start giving again you know like kids do <laughs> anyways be well peace out